I'm about to do the embroidery on the snowmen for January's table topper, and I want to send the cut files over to my brother Scan and Cut. So what I did was I took from the CD, I put it in my computer. If you don't have a CD player in your computer or your laptop, or I have an external drive in my Amazon store, and there is a, a link below the video to my Amazon store, and you can always find it there. So in my folders, um, I've got my quick access panel open here. And essentially, if I were to go to my documents, in my documents, I have a folder called embroidery. And I have another folder called Kimberbell. Let me scroll down to it here. And then inside of this folder is Cuties Table Toppers. So I created this folder by putting my cursor out here in the white part somewhere and did a right click. And you can go New and Folder. And then create it and name it whatever you want. So I have Cuties Table Toppers. So I'll always be accessing this. And over here in the quick access panel, if I scroll up to the top a little bit, from the Kimberbell section right here, I grab this and I just, let me scroll up, it jumped down. I grab this folder right here and I drug it over here to my quick access. So I will always be getting to the folder from right here. You can get this quick access to show by going to view, going to view, this is new for Windows 11, and scroll down to show and go to navigation pane. And you can see that little blue part right there. That's exactly, if it's not checked, you need to click it and check it, and then you'll be able to see these. So, all right, so I'm going to go to the table toppers. And I am looking for the SVG files. So here are all of the folders that contain the embroidery files. And if you scroll to the bottom, they're in alphabetical order. There are the SVG cut files. I open this up and I need the snowman. And so even though this looks like a Microsoft Edge, it'll say HTML document, which is usually the web, that's only because the computer does not know what to do with an SVG file. It's not native to Windows, and so it doesn't know what to do with it. So it just calls it a Edge HTML, but don't worry, it is an SVG file because it says it right there, even though it's got the uh, Microsoft Edge icon on it. So I'm going to open my browser, and in my browser, I'm at canvasworkspace.brother.com. I'm only doing this because I don't feel like putting it on a USB and taking it over to the machine and scrolling around on the USB to find it. So I'm going to log into the Brother Canvas, and this is free. You can create an account on here, and I'm going to use the canvas to transfer the designs wirelessly down to my Scan and Cut. My Scan and Cut is already turned on, and I have pressed OK, so it went through its initial sequencing. I'm going to go over here to New. There are all these projects that you can play with, and there, these are all free. And um, and then across the top, we have Canvas Projects, My Projects, Pattern Collection, and Disney. So I'm going to come right here to New and click on it. And it's going to give me a new mat. And up here across the top, here is a button that says Import SVG. I want to click on that. And it wants to know where do I want to get it from. So I'm going to choose File. I'm going to scroll down to the SVG folder and I'm going to go to my snowman. There he is. Now the snowman actually has three pieces to it. Now see, see how it says SVG right there instead of HTML? If it was not an SVG file, you'd get an error message right here. So don't listen to the computer. It doesn't know what it's talking about right there. So here are the three pieces that you need. This is the body, and then you've got the nose, and then you have the hat. Now, I'm not going to cut out the body using the scan and cut because I'm going to use fleece. And I don't want that fuzz all over my mat, and I just don't feel like dealing with that. So I will 
cut the fleece around the tack down line during the embroidery process. So I'm going to click on the body and just hit the delete key. I only need three hats and three noses because I am going to do the other one using Simply Applique for my Simply Applique users. But if you are doing it this way, then you will need four hats and four noses. I'm going to click on a nose. I'm going to right click and go copy and then right click and paste, right click, paste, and this will work for me here. I'm going to, I'm going to turn these around so they nest. I don't use a lot of fabric. Okay. And then I'm going to put one hat in each quadrant. So I've highlighted this one. I'm going to right click, copy, right click, paste, put that here, right click, paste, put that one here. And that's it. That looks great. So I'm going to send it down to the scan and cut right now. And I'm just going to hit scan and cut transfer. And that's it. It's ready and I'm done. All right, I have my scan and cut here and I have got it to the main home screen. And I just took a wipe and cleaned off my low tack mat. This is the teal low tack mat. And what I use to clean it off, and I've been doing this forever and it works fine. This is the Costco brand of Cottonelle wipes. There's no alcohol in them and there's no oil in them at all. So they seem to work really well. I've been using them forever and they work great. So I'm gonna take my fabric and if I recall, I have my noses. This has got heat and bond light on the back of it and it's really adhered real well. So I'm gonna put, my noses are up here and it is right side up. And I have, this is the SDX225, and I have the gold fabric blade in there. There's my gold hat. There's my brown hat. And here's my black hat. He's like a cyber guy. <laughs> Kidding. All right. Oh. Okay, this looks great. This will work just fine. All right, so I'm going to load my mat. And to load it, you just slide it in here. It's got two little ridges. And you just slide it in, keep it straight. And there's an arrow. For those of you who haven't taken your scan and cut out of the box yet, there's an arrow at the top. And it tells you which way to put the mat in. There's not an arrow down here. Now on the older models, the CM models, you can put the mat in from either end, but on the SDX models, and it'll tell you right here which one you have, the older ones have a clear cover. The newer one has a solid co cover. So you can only put it in one way. You cannot mess this up. If you try to put it in, it'll give you an error message and tell you you have it backwards. And there are three buttons on the side here, and the middle one looks like your mat, and that's how you load it. That's all you do. And it's ready to go. So I got you in here pretty close so you can see what's going on on the screen. When you first do this, you can scan or you can pull. This pattern right here means pattern that's already inside of the machine. But what we're going to do is hit this button down here that says retrieve data because we're getting data from the web. I sent it down wirelessly. Now it wants to know where do you want to get it from? Do you want to get it from inside the machine? Do you, do you get it from the web where those little radar waves are? Maybe it's on a USB or you might be cabled to your laptop. Mine came from the web. I'm going to touch that. And it's retrieving it. And there it is. So let me get my little pointer. There's hat number one, hat number two, hat number three, and my little carrot noses. 
Now, Kimberbell's cut files have a tendency to be just a tad small. I don't know why, but they are. So I am going to touch this and I'm gonna hit the edit button right here. And we have object edit, and that's what I wanna play with right there. And see the little, here's got the square with a stretchy arrow, that means to make bigger or smaller. There's a plus sign so you can make multiples. Here you can do a rotation. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do on this menu. So I want to hit the stretchy arrow, and I'm gonna hit, you want to make sure that this button right here is lit. So this, this means to like maintain aspect ratio, constrain proportions type thing. If it's off, then, then you can only make it taller or skinnier or whatever and move it one direction. I want it to sequentially get larger. So uh, that is on and that's good. And I'm going to hit the plus sign one, two times. I'm going to go to the next one, one, two times, and the next one, one, two times. I just know this from experience dealing with Kimberbell designs. Now, I did not group these so they would all get bigger at the same time because, I don't know, maybe I just don't trust myself. So, I'm going to do one, one, two, whoop, there. I didn't hear it beep twice. One, two. One, two, one, two. There we go. So these are ready now. And I'm going to scan the mat to make sure everything's going to fit. So I'm going to tell it okay and tell it okay. And that kind of backs you out of all of the menus that you were in. Tell it okay. There's my little scan button I'm looking for, the blue box with the bar across it. And I'm going to hit start. There we go. So now I can see like this guy right here is hanging off the gold just a little bit. So I'm going to grab him and move him around so that he fits. Matter of fact, I probably need to rotate them. Probably need to rotate all of them. The noses are good. I'm going to go into edit and edit object and I'm going to hit this rotation button and I want 90 degrees this way. There we go. That's probably a little bit better. I wonder, that's even better. Okay, so 90 and 10, that looks like that'll fit. I should have made my fabric maybe just a little bit larger. I think that one's okay. The way it's, I can't resist, I gotta fiddle with it. I think that that's all right. I'm gonna tell it okay, okay, okay. And I'm gonna hit this little wrench right here and I'm gonna go into the dark. You, that's a light scan, that's a light background, this is a dark background, and tell it okay. See, I can't see it. So if you pull yours up and you're doing this and you can't see what it was, so I can touch it and I can see the red box, and I can see that the red box is all with, whoop. I should've used bigger fabric. I did a five by five. Okay, um, so you can go into the wrench and you can hit light background and tell it okay and you can actually see the pieces themselves a little bit better. So I'm gonna tell it okay and then it says please select and I wanna cut. And so I would cut, knowing what I know now, I would cut the fabric a little bit bigger. Five by five wasn't quite big enough but it's, hopefully it'll work. You really want like a, half inch at least wider all the way around. It's auto sensing the depth of the fabric. Perfect. Oh, you know what? I didn't account for the enlarging. That's what it was.
done. All right, let's see how we did. Hmm. Was half cut on? Well, how come that didn't cut through? If that happens, if, if it doesn't cut all the way through, don't move the piece. I'm going to tell it okay. And I want to select and cut. Half cut is off. I don't know why. Let me check my blade. Make sure it's not dirty. No. Does it have gook on it? Huh. Strange. All right, well, we're just gonna cut them again. If you don't take the fabric off the mat, it's gonna cut right over the first cut. That'll be exact, it'll be fine. I could almost run it again. I wonder if my blade is dull. Y'all, I cut the... I cut stuff like crazy on this. Hmm. I could. I'm gonna run it a third time. You really don't hear it cutting the fabric like it did last time. Hopefully, it's just getting those little strings that are caught now. Third time's a charm. Look at that. Came out just fine. Sometimes that happens. And if it does, as long as you don't remove your fabric, look at that, they're perfect. Um, you should be able to cut and cut again. You want to be very careful to try not to stretch these as you pull them off, kind of scrape a little bit. That'll be good. Okay, all of this is done. Now I need to cut one more on that fabric, so I'm going to go okay. And now I'm going to go um, see the back arrow right up here. Let me scooch in. Okay, so I'm going to hit the back arrow. And I want to go to edit. And then um, that one right there, there's a trash can touch the trash can and okay to delete it and hit that one and trash can and okay and then these guys up here I'm just gonna there's an easy way to do all of these at once so these three red boxes here mean group and I'm going to touch the group and it wants to know part of the mat or all of the mat. So I'm going to do part of the mat. And I'm going to move this over just like this and pull this up. I could have done it with the hat below that too and tell it okay. And tell it okay. And now I'm going to hit the trash can. And that gets rid of all of the noses at the same time. See? That's good. And I'm going to put my black fabric on here now. My last piece, this one has little dots on it. And I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit the scan button again and start. So I didn't have to reload the pattern. The pattern's already in there. And I deleted all but one piece of it. So I'm going to take my hat I'm going to move him right onto the fabric, just like that. That looks good. Tell it okay. Select. Cut. I'd rather run it three times than cut through the mat. If you do cut through your mat, just hit, put some duct tape on the back of your mat and you'll keep going. It'll be fine.
just like a dull rotary cutter. <laughs> it's fine. Not too many things in my hands. All right, this is great. Okay, we're all finished with Scan and Cut now. I've got all my pieces, and that's excellent. Except for my the fleece for my snowman. I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm going to hit the uh, map button so it ejects. There we go. And I'm all done. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so this section is for those of you that do not have the embroidery CD and you do have a Brother Scan and Cut and Simply Applique or BES4 software. So I have made a copy out of the book. I made a copy of the page that we need that has the face, the nose, and the hat. And we're not going to worry about all of this or the words. And you want one of two mats. You either want what's called a scanning mat, and it'll say right here, it'll, it's a scanning mat. And the scanning mat is not sticky, and it has a clear flap over it to hold your paper in place, your paper pattern. I prefer this because it does not allow dog fur or cat fur or dust or anything to get on there. Or you're going to want to use what's called the low tack mat. It'll say low tack and it's uh, kind of a turquoise color. The low tack mat will allow the paper to be pulled back up off of it. If you put a paper pattern on a standard tack which is purple or the fabric mat which is gold it may not come back up depending on how sticky your mat is. I'm going to use my scanning mat and I'm going to go ahead and just put this paper up under here if you need one of these, you can get them. I've got them listed in my Amazon store, or you can get them at allbrands.com. I'll link to both. And I'm going to just load it into the machine. Let me touch the screen. I just turned it on. There we go. And I'm going to load the mat. So I just have the mat placed right here. Sorry about the lighting, guys. It's uh, kind of late in the evening, and not, we didn't have a very bright day today. Okay, now that you have the mat loaded, you have two choices on the home screen. Pattern is for patterns that are inside of the machine, and we don't need those right now. And then we have scan, and that's what we want because we're going to scan this paper. So I'm going to hit scan, and you have three choices. You can do a direct cut, which I don't want to do. You can scan to cut data, or you can scan and save it to a USB. I want to scan to cut data. And I'm just going to go ahead and start. If your start button is not green, you probably need to load your mat. So I'm going to hit start, and it's going to scan it. Great. So now it's recognizing it. All right. So I'm not really going to do anything with it at this point at all because I am going to upload this image that it scanned into the Brother Canvas. It's much easier to work in the Brother Canvas online than it is to mess around with it here on the screen but you do have to give it some instructions. So these three buttons right here are highlighted and it wants to know what you want to do. What part do you want to capture on this? This button is outside only. You can tell there's no, nothing inside. It looks like a circle and a square are kind of welded together. That's outside only. This is inside outside with regions and that's usually used for color and then this right here is inside and outside and you would want to use this button if you're doing lettering and you want to capture like in a B you need to capture the outside of the B and the little hole in the middle otherwise it won't be a B 
So I would use inside outside if I wanted to do that little heart right there. So it would capture the outside of the heart and the ins outside of the circle and the inside of the heart. But because these shapes, the hat, the nose, and the snowman do not have any center parts, I can just use outside only. And we're going to get rid of all the little letters and the X and the heart up in the cloud. So I'm going to touch outside only, and it's going to process that. And now what it wants to know is, are you okay with it? Do you want to take these arrows and draw it in and, and just select a certain portion of the mat? Not at this point because I'm going to take care of all that up in the cloud. So I'm just going to hit OK. And it's processing. Now it wants to know where do you want to save it? Do you want to save it inside the machine to a USB or to the cloud? And I want to save it to the cloud. So it is saving to my account in the cloud. You need to have an account in the Brother Canvas already. It's canvasworkspace.brother.com. It says save successful. If your machine does not have this wirelessly, you would save it to a USB and then take the USB over to your laptop and then upload it to the canvas there. So now I'm gonna to go to the Brother Canvas and retrieve this data that we scanned in. So here I am on canvasworkspace.brother.com. If you do not have an account here yet, you would go to register and put all your information there. You'll also need to have a number that's in your settings on your machine to register your machine. And I will put a link to another video up here to show you how to do that. I'm going to log in. And it doesn't matter if you tell it remember me or not, it never does. So it just cached my password, which is fine. And here you can download a local version of this that you can use on your laptop and not be connected to the internet. That version looks a lot different than the one that I'm going to use and I really don't need it because I never use this when I'm not on the internet. So I just X out of that. You can tell it, don't ask me again, but it'll continue to ask you. So I just X out of it and ignore it. Across the top here, we have Canvas Project, My Projects, Pattern Collection, and Disney. You can start a new project right here. It'll let you know if it has any updates that have been done. And then here are all of the free projects that you can make using the Brother Canvas. And this is all free uh, doing uh, using your machine. I'm going to go to My Projects up here in on this tab. And we can see there it is right there. So when you hover over your design, you get two buttons. This is, and it has a little pop-up. It says edit this project or data for this project will be downloaded. We're not ready to download just yet. So I'm going to click the edit button. And here it is. And so what I like to do on this is I want to move the pieces that I want to keep and then delete everything else. It's the easiest way to clean up your mat. So I'm going to grab the hat by hovering over it and clicking on it. And I'm going to drag it off the mat. See, I chose outside only. That little heart is gone in here. So if I'd chosen inside outside, you would see the little heart. So I need the nose and I need the snowman right there. And now I'm going to put my cursor up here in the top corner and I'm just going to drag it all over the rest of the mat. That line there is the bottom of the paper. I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and it's all gone. So I'm going to move everything back to the mat. Very good. And now I'm going to download it two times. I'm going to download it once, and I'm going to do scan and cut transfer. And when I do that, it's going to download. And if you were see, it says scan and cut transfer is ready. And then now you would do the exact same thing that we did before. You would go back over to the machine, retrieve data, and pull up your pieces. And you'd be good to go. I'm going to close this now. And now you want to download it again. 
button to download. Just click it again. And here you can see it's going to download. We want to download to PC. This will work on a Mac, but you need to be running Parallels and a Windows OS. It does work. So it's going to save to the FCM file format. I'm going to click this, and it goes automatically into my Downloads folder. And uh, oh, here I'm going to click the folder right here. So you can see this now because I am running in Brilliance Thumbnailer, and I've told it I want to be able to see FCM files. Now I'm going to open up BES4, and BES4 is the mothership to Simply Applique. So if you have Simply Applique, you would use this. All right, if you're running Simply Applique, it's going to look exactly like this except up here in the corner, in the top left corner, it's going to say an A instead of a B. And I want to bring in the snowman. So I'm going to go click the B and scroll down to import FCM. You cannot drag and drop this. It won't let you. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to click open. Now what you want to do is get your book and take a look at what the embroidery design is going to look like. I know that this stitches at a 90 degree angle and it's not quite 90 degrees. I don't think I'm going to uh, arrange and I'm going to center. There we go. Now I know that's pretty close to straight and let me scroll up. Grab this and scroll up just a little bit. Okay, the nose, I'm going to turn it, is angled like this, kind of down toward that bottom corner, and it is right here, approximately. Where is center on this? Right there. So the nose. Oh, grab it here. If you can't get a hold of it, you can come over here to all items and click it. And that way you'll grab the right one. And I'm going to point it toward the corner. That's approximately where it needs to be. And then the hat. Click it. And I'm going to bring it over a little bit, just like this, and I'm going to tilt it just a tad. There we go. It looks like these points, this is where you kind of have to guesstimate a little bit, are down touching the top of the head. There we go, just like that. Just a little bit more. There we go. That looks right. That looks good enough to me. And you do need a couple of eyes on here. And this software does not have the ability. You can add a design. We have an applique, but we don't have a fill. So you might want to just do buttons unless you have a fill that you can do on your software, on your machine perhaps, uh, you might do that. So I'm just going to X out of this. There are no fill designs that you can do on here. So you can put two little buttons. Let me grab my nose and bring it down just a little bit. Make a little bit more room for my eyes right here. So that's the only thing about this particular way of doing it. You would need to use little buttons, or you could do a fill on your machine yourself. But other than that, that is ready to go. Now what we need to do is reorder the pieces so that they stitch in the correct order. So this artwork right here, you can right-click and rename it if you want. We only have three pieces, so I kind of know uh, what I want to do. I'm going to grab it, and you want to hover over the one you want it to be after, and you can't really do that here. So I'm going to move that up, and I'm going to now hover over the hat, 
and the hat's going to be last, so I want the hat hovered over the nose. So now I have, it's going to stitch the body, the nose, and then the hat, okay? So now I want to control A or control all. You want to make sure all items, not just one or two, not just this, all items are highlighted. We're going to come up to tools, the tools tab, and convert to applique. And voila, it is done. So that is how you will do this. Now here, it's going to stitch placement stitch, tack down stitch, satin, final satin stitch. And it's going to want to do it in this order. So what you can do is click on the hat and then right click and remove overlap stitches. And we're going to just click this distance and tell it fine. And you can see right here, it's not going to stitch the satin stitch now. It shouldn't. To remove overlap stitches, you click the one that's on top. That should work. So now we will go File, Save As, and you will choose your machine's file type. And I'm going to call it Snowman. And I'm going to call it Snowman BES4 so I know which is which from my other Snowman. And hit Save. And we are good to go. I would choose the A for the ability to create letters. And then I'm just going to... Right here in the text box, I'm going to type a period and hit enter. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. They're about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to move it up here. They're about a half an inch. A wide file is about how, how big these are. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay. And I'm going to right click copy and right click paste. Move the other one right here. Let's see, that's a full inch. This that file is about a half an inch. Right there. That's perfect. That's all I really need for these. And I'm gonna say file, save stitch file as, and I'll just save it here. I'm going to save it as PES for my brother. You would save it to whatever machine file you want for your home embroidery machine. And I'm just going to type and call it eyes. Hit save. Now that I'm here in BES4, I'm going to come over here to this uh, untitled, because I've already saved this as snowman. If you're on Untitled, or you can just add a new tab by going New, you can click New right up here and see you'll have an Untitled tab. Now I want to come up here to the top and say Open. And I want to open my eyes. Ta-da! And there they are. I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to... Con uh, Right click, copy. I'm going to come back to the snowman and I'm going to right click and paste. And there they are. Now I'm going to move them about, uh, they're right above the point of the nose. That's about where they need to be. And I want them to stitch last so they are in the right. Um, stitch order over here. And I do not want those to be applique. I want them to be a fill. So they're actually fine. And so now you would go file, save as, and you would save it to your home embroidery machine format. So I want to show you what I'm going to do here. I want to put a snowflake that I got from Designs by Juju onto my table topper in the snowball part. 
I sent the design over wirelessly. I'm sorry for the glare right here, guys. Let me see if I can change this at all. Okay, I'm gonna touch the pocket for memory. Since I sent it over wirelessly, I'm gonna touch the wireless button. And here is the snowflake. And I'm gonna hit set. Let me go into my settings. And I need to go delete. Uh, let's see, background image delete. That's on page 10. Tell it okay, tell it okay. Before I touch embroidery, I want to scan the project and then be able to move it around and resize it. Once you touch embroidery, you can no longer resize. So we're in an edit mode right now without committing yet to the embroidery. As long as you see embroidery right there, you can, you can resize things. So I'm gonna scan by touching the camera and I'm just gonna hit the scan button and tell it okay. So this is what it sees. If you go to touch this and you move it on the screen at all and your hoop starts to jump around, that means you did it in embroidery mode instead of an edit mode and you're not gonna be able to do anything with the size. I'm gonna hit close on the scan function and I want to move this now. I'm gonna to touch it and just drag it into where I want it to go. And I'm gonna get it real close, okay? I'm just gonna let go of it. That's real close. I wanna get it just a little smaller, so I'm gonna to touch edit and size. And I'm gonna hit the button to bring all four sides in at once until it knocks at me like that. And that way I can make sure, cause I can see it. So I'm not real uh, centered. I'm gonna to touch the 100% and I'm gonna to go to like 200. That's too big. Let me go to 150. Okay. So I'm gonna jog this over just a little bit so that it's pretty much on the white uh, part. I need to rotate it. I'm gonna go into rotate. And if you're in rotate, you can move and rotate at the same time. If you're in move, you can only move. So rotate's usually the way to go. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think that's acceptable. I'm gonna tell it okay. And embroidery. And look. The needle has now moved to the center of the white. I think I want to use a super light gray thread. I don't want to use a metallic on this because I've already got gold metallic in it. I don't want to clash. So I need a super, super light gray. Let's go and see what it looks like. back here in 12 minutes. That snowflake turned out so nice right there. I've got all kinds of jump threads I'm gonna have to cut. But it has gotten to where, I don't know if you can see because of the glare, it's gotten to where it's gonna do the little circles and whatnot and I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna touch okay and get out of needle plus minus and hit return. So that tells it we're, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Now what I wanna do is get out of this all together and I wanna go into digitizing mode on the luminaire. Now I can tell from this scan that I just did that I can see up at the top 
So I might be able to go ahead and do all of the uh, stippling up there that I want to, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna go to home. And is it okay to cancel? I'm gonna tell it okay. Now I wanna go into my design center. Uh, no, I don't want that. I'm gonna tell it cancel. And we're going into my design center. And now I want to scan what's here. So this little leaf button up here, I'm gonna tell it image scan and it's going to scan. Now it wants you to use the scanning mat, which isn't really a, a hoop or anything, but it doesn't know that I don't have the scanning mat in and it doesn't care. It's just gonna scan whatever is in the hoop. So I'm gonna hit scan and tell it okay. Alright, let's see what it saw. That's pretty good. So, you can make it darker by um, up here there's a scale from lighter to darker. I'm going to touch darker. And now I want to give it an area to do its stitching in. So I'm going to hit the shape button right here. And I'm going to choose a square. Tell it okay. And I want to make the square very, very big. So I'm going to hit the size button and I'm going to press all four arrows outward. And we're going to go as large as um, I probably can. Let's see. So what I'm looking at right here is the outside of this square. Um, I'm not totally straight. I need to go a little bit larger. We can angle it too. So that's a good enough area right now um, as far as width wise. And I want to make it taller. Let's see how tall it will go. I want to get all the way up to the top right there. And um, that looks pretty good actually. I like that. I wonder if, I'm hoping it will work. Okay, so I'm gonna tell it okay. So what I've done is I've set the area that I want to stitch in. And now I need to choose a pattern to stitch. These tools up here in this group of boxes, I don't know if you can see, there's a little white line in between the gray here and the gray here. Gray, gray background with white boxes. There's a white line and gray background. So these are drawing tools and these are fill tools. So I'm gonna to touch this. This stitch line up here is for drawing. Oops, I didn't wanna do that. Didn't wanna do that. This stitch line down here is for filling. So I wanna do that one. I'm gonna choose my stipple. And don't worry about the size or anything right now. I'm gonna tell it okay. Now I need to dump the stipple into the box that I set for the drawing region. So I'm going to touch the paint bucket and I'm just going to touch in here and that fills the entire area with stipple. Now what I need to do is erase. I'm going to use my capacitive pen and I'm going to get bigger, go to about 200. So now what I want to do is take the stipple out of the snowball where I just did the, I've got little bars down here on the bottom and the side to move the picture around, but I do not want to stipple on the hat or in the snowball. And so now I'm going to take my eraser, I'm going to touch the eraser, I'm going to make it a lot bigger. You can see how big it's getting right up here. That's pretty good. I'm going to tell it okay. And now I'm going to erase in the snowball. And this takes a minute to do. You can get uh, close to the edge as you like. I just don't want 
and it doesn't have to be exact here. I just do not want any stippling inside my snowball. These are so fun. This is where you can customize all you want. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to not have any stippling in my snowman's hat. Because I do not want to stipple on top of my applique. Now what you can do is go I think darker. Yeah. I don't see any stipple on the picture at all. And I'm going to go lighter all the way out to nearly white. And see, I don't see any stippling on the snowball or on my snowman's hat. Oh, that's a piece of white thread. I was like, why is that white? That looks really good. So everywhere else is going to stipple, and that's fine. Now I'm going to hit next, and that's where we decide on the size. So it's a pretty tight stipple right now. I'm going to return because I'm not done. i got to do this guy up here. Okay, that looks good. Let me go lighter, lighter, lighter. There's some right there. See, you can kind of see it when you go real light. You can see what you missed. A little bit right there. And believe me, it will stop and take a stitch right there. Okay, that looks good. All right. Let me make it a little darker. Make everybody happy. All right, I'm going to hit next. Now I'm going to mess with the size. And that's really too dense for me, so I'm going to go a lot larger. I'm going to hit this button, spacing, 220, okay. Let's see what we got. That's between all the stipple, okay. Run pitch, I'm not messing with that. And then this, distance. Is that a quarter inch? I haven't really played with this since the new upgrade. That looks pretty good. It's kind of tight still. That's more like what I'm looking for. Something big. Maybe not that big, but what I am also looking for is to make sure my stipple is enclosed. It, it's not kind of half on and half off. That's pretty good. That's acceptable. I don't know if you guys can see it real well, but I like it. I think it's fine. Now I'm going to write that down and remember that my stipple size is six. So my spacing, I need to take a picture of my phone. Where's my phone? Now it also wants to, let's see what we got here. I've got it on single stitch, they're single or triple, and I've got it on single and that's what I want. It also thinks it wants to stitch a dark line around it and I'm not gonna tell it to do that, so that's no big deal. I'm just gonna hit set. Now it's gonna go into embroidery mode instead of edit. I'm gonna tell it okay. And we're ready to stitch it out. This is one of my favorite, favorite features. I'm going to hit embroidery of the Luminaire that it can do this for me. I just absolutely love it. Here we go. It's going to take three minutes. I love it. This looks great. Okay, so it thinks it is going to do an outline stitch right here, and I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to hit return, and we're finished. So now I'm going to move this around in the hoop, 
and stitch out some more snowballs and continue stippling until I'm all finished. So excited. Thank you.